Today we're talking about nepotism with communist characteristics. This video is going viral in China. The boy was asked by his teacher what he wanted to do when he grows up. He says that he wants to become the president of the Agricultural Development Bank of China because his grandfather was the president of the bank and his mother is the vice president of the bank and so he wants to inherit his family's business and inherit the family assets. Now, there's actually no problem with rich boys wanting to inherit their family's wealth, but nepotism in China is just underneath a layer of communism. Now, the reason that this is going viral is because Chinese internet users couldn't believe that this particular bank is somehow now a part of a family asset. And after seeing the child's word spread, the bank in question was actually shocked. And so the HQ sent out a notice to the banks to discuss in a chat group about all the branches to start investigating who exactly this child is from, whose family. And so first of all, the Agricultural Development Bank is a state-owned bank. So it's not some private investment bank owned by this particular family. It's actually owned by the government. And in fact, the Agricultural Development Bank of China is a policy bank, meaning that itself does not handle personal business. What they do are related to business activities, such as implementation of national policies on agricultural productivity. And also second, nepotism is real in China. It's pretty much everywhere, but it just gets funnier because it usually involves the CCP officials' power and their family. Now, which this all happening under the so-called anti-corruption campaign, right, by Xi Jinping. Uh, Yet yeah, they're the most corrupt. So it's quite ironic. Pretty funny because this kind of investigation launched by the HQ to try to find out whose kid this is, uh, which family they're from, it's supposed to show that they're just and they have no sort of tainted spots in their uh, <laughs> career or, or I guess you would call it employment side of things. But which president of the branch is going to come out and claim this child is theirs? publicly, that is, to expose their own corruption. That's, of course, not happening. Now, internet users offered all sorts of comments on this particular incident. Some agree with the child, saying that, yes, if nothing goes wrong, you can definitely inherit the bank. And another says, the child doesn't know the after effect, so he's definitely telling the truth. Another two comments say that he's telling the state of the country as is. One more says, he thought that the process is clear. No problem at all. Thumbs up. Some other comments also asked, saying here, I'm 30 and I have no idea what is even the difference between the Agricultural Bank and the Agricultural Development Bank. And another asks, is the Agro Development Bank really a private asset? I find it quite funny because it would be better uh, for the bank's HQ to not do much or anything at all, in fact, because now it's just become stress in effect that the more you don't want to talk about it, the more you hide it, and the more it's being revealed. Like seriously, what do they expect? All bankers to just come out and say, by the way, after our dinner last night, we scolded our child and said, don't talk about our family you know, lineage when it comes to banking. And uh, supposedly, I guess they took the initiative to come out clean saying that, well, this is our grandson and uh, we just uh, punished him for whatever he said. Nobody's gonna do that, right? That's like exposing your own troubles. So guess what happened next? Well, before we get there, let me do a sponsor segment from Puritan. If there is one supplement you want to get incorporated into your diet, it's a good omega-3 supplement. It's the best all-around defender for your health. It reduces inflammation, cholesterol, improves eyesight, and reduces risk for heart problems, as well as helps with joint pain among other benefits. Today, I want to introduce you to Puritan's Green Vegetables. Puritan gets their ingredients straight from the high mountains of South Korea, and the omega oils are extracted from purslane and perilla seeds. It's 100% vegan. Now, personally, I've been using Omega for about nine years, close to 10 years now. I've recently switched to Puritan for about a few weeks now. Here's why. We mostly get our Omegas from fish, right? But that's not the best case for everyone, especially there's the aftertaste. It might not be suitable for vegetarians or vegan. Uh, so the most important part, right, we often forget is the actual concentration for Omegas. Puritan soft gels have a much higher content for Omega 3, 6, 7, and 9 than many of the brands out there. And some say that they notice there's less hair loss, more energy, lower cholesterol levels, and overall improved health. I think the best part for me is the lack of information or the reduction of information. Other brands also they use this high heat method to extract the oil, which in turn creates a lot of harmful byproducts. Puritan's green vegetable is done using a patented method of supercritical carbon dioxide low temperature extraction. So it preserves the natural properties and maintains high purities. First of its kind, so get it for yourself or as a gift to your loved ones ahead of the holiday season. Use my code DZ2023 and you can receive free shipping globally. Check out my link in the description and comment today.
As expected, after their so-called rigorous investigation, they claim that after what they have gone through with talking to people, what this child said is false. And nobody came out to claim the child. Now, whether you believe the bank or the child, let me just say this. Uh, they always say that a child, what they say is what they think. And yet adults lie. So internet users also express their frustration on this particular sort of phenomenon, uh, nepotism, corruption, etc., considering the state of the Chinese economy. Now, people are losing their jobs, right? Even public employees, which traditionally were seen as sort of a, the, the, the solid career to get into once you're in working for the government, you're set. They're now getting wage cuts too. So when most of China is struggling economically, you see a video like this that's bound to raise a lot of concerns about the state of the country. Now, the lack of jobs is actually a sad meme in China. The guys who lost their jobs do food delivery and take breaks by watching girls who lost their jobs and became streamers, who then takes breaks by ordering food delivery from the guys who lost their jobs. And then there's also the third type, right, which is ones that don't really care what happens with them in their future. They become security guards, which get to watch streams and order deliveries at the same time. So people are calling this the perfect economic loop for young grads and uh, people without jobs in China. This video here demonstrates part of that life. This is a delivery driver on the evening of April 2nd in Shanghai. He's hitting his head repeatedly with his helmet because he was involved in an accident hitting the elderly man. Now, because of the delivery delays which would penalize him, he's reacting quite extremely to the situation, shouting things like, do you want me to die or I will be late and start to cry. Now, there's another video here shows another delivery man who was circled by the police. You see his reaction here is just on the ground. He's shouting, he's crying, and he's losing his hope. So this type of what Chinese officials refer to as the low-end population, people who have to kind of live paycheck to paycheck, living month to month, working jobs like this, they're struggling to make the ends meet. Yet, you know, you see the other side of China through these videos, uh, about nepotism and, and so on. So two extremes, right? And just the, what I call the cycle of non-communist families going through life in China. That type of experience is almost inevitable for a majority of the people. Now, people are arguing, saying that, well, this stuff happens in the United States and whatnot. But think about what the general atmosphere is, is like in China. They're supposed to be protected under this umbrella of equal opportunities under communism, right? everybody gets the same or everything's supposed to be the same. There's supposed to be no class differences and everybody should be the same. Obviously, that's been a lie. It's been proven to be a lie. That, that's all because the CCP itself is the root of the problem. It creates inequality through their version of so-called equality. And because the CCP leads everything and has to have absolute grip on power, it doesn't offer any constraints from any sort of system or moral, I guess you would call it the normal concepts of a human being. And so anything goes. The CCP serves as the, what the example people like to use is the athletes, the coaches, and the referees in the game. They basically serve all three roles. So everything, everything that they do, they're participating in it, they're contributing to it, and they're also judging it. And then that particular type of system, you have control over everything, how can that not lead to corruption, right? It's like the only thing in the system is you. You can do whatever you want. And when you get to do whatever you want, it tends to be corruption as, real, uh, I guess you'd say, reality goes. And so, of course, it's the best breeding ground for corruption. And when one corrupt person falls, and we've seen many fall in China over the years under the so-called banner of anti-corruption, you have tens of thousands more who are immediately ready to take their spots in the system. So this inevitably creates the end in which China is now under a situation that there's a huge amount of inequality, class differences, something that they tried to stamp out as sort of the original uh, ways for communism goes. And obviously, obviously that's failed. And that's how reality really sets in for many people in China. Now, it's also very relevant because China recently was revealed that their personal income tax revenue fell about 16% in the first two months of the year. Now, there's many speculations and reasons that could potentially trigger this, and it's been sparking a lot of debates online. People are speculating that it could be the lack of jobs, it could be wage cuts, the poor performing economy, especially in the public and state sector. But there's also the possibility of a sort of a long-term effect, particularly since the end of COVID, or the beginning of COVID, actually. If you think about the population-wise, due to COVID deaths since 2020, and today even, the virus continued to strike China as we speak, 
The founder of Falun Gong, Master Li Hongzhi, recently revealed that the CCP virus or COVID-19 actually is targeting CCP officials. And these include celebrities, STEM researchers, and anybody else who do the bidding on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. So China overall is shrinking in both its manpower, and of course there's also the aging aspect as well. And so any little sign that you see that contribute to revealing that, well, that's really important for us because now it's losing its economic edge, it's losing its attractiveness, and we're seeing more and more of the social resentment boiling over. Now, because the economy has barely grown in the past two, three years, the immediately causes, like we just mentioned, uh, with the declining property construction, state control uh, in terms of the sales of properties, there's zero COVID policies that basically tank the private sector investment. Now, long-term speaking, we talk about the political problems, unwillingness to implement market reforms under Xi Jinping, and the fear uh, of political changes that could come with these market policies. Now, the reason why we're talking about all this is because it's relevant to our topic today. It provides the important context of why things like this are popping up in China today. Now, back in like 10 years, 20 years ago, nepotism it was still a thing, but it wasn't such a big issue when it relates to the current struggles in China. Uh, there's actually some famous examples back then too. I'll tell you some. The most famous case of a, uh, what you would call is wealth or power flaunting happened uh, near Beijing in 2010. It was a man who was driving a sedan. He killed a female college student. And so after he gets out of the car, instead of showing remorse, he shouts instead, my dad is Li Gang. Now, it became an internet meme for the worst reason possible because before that, nobody knew who Li Gang was. Uh, but then after people found out that his dad was actually a deputy police chief at a uh, police bureau in the province. And so the incident was made into even a parody song saying um, you can drive however fast you want as long as your dad is Li Gang. <laughs> There's also signs where it says, don't drive too fast because your dad isn't Li Gang. And so this, my dad is Li blah, 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 became sort of a meme every time you think that you have some edge over other people in China because you have a political backing. A year later though, the my dad is Li Gang got one upped by another dude who is also, his last name is Li, but this time it was my dad is Li Shuangjiang. And so it was also a car related incident. The guy was 15 at the time. He drove an unregistered BMW and he and his friend beat up a couple in the car in front. He even had an assault rifle in his trunk. Now, of course, he didn't use it, but the police later claimed that the, car were, uh, the, the gun was a toy gun. So his dad, instead of being a police chief, his dad was a military singer. So now he has the military background, right? Uh, similar cases also happened since 2010, 2011 in other cities. It all kind of pertains to the idea of my dad is, or my mom is, or in the case of this kid, my granddad was. Uh, these sort of thing, right? So whoever you're name dropping, it became synonymous with wealth and power flaunting. More recently, there was also the case of the blood tank sister, a girl who got into a car accident in the Western Tibetan region. Now, she was able to use her family connections to mobilize public servants, government employees, to come donate blood to her to keep her alive. And then she also received a, an airlift to a hospital in another province, which would be impossible for any regular person in China to do unless they have power. Now, these are just examples that made the headlines. Now, talking about the child's words, right? Uh, the, my granddad is a bank president. Of course, banks are not as powerful as the military or the police, but banks are still really important. And in fact, that's where most of the revenue, the money comes from, right? Uh, they're not supposed to be this private business, but it's exposing it once again that through time and time, this generational accumulation of power, it becomes a family inheritance. And so through the mouth of a child, that corruption really runs quite deep in China and it's in multiple sectors. Also another note on this, this probably happened in sort of a local area where you have so-called the, the four families, right? The big four. And uh, it's kind of like in Brahman, the, 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 the top sort of part of the class don't really deal with the bottom part of the cl uh, social class. And this really is the definition of that. And so of the four families, they control the local law system, uh, the medical system, banking system, etc. And so that's really where you see the most amount of nepotism, even down to the sort of grassroots local level. Now, it was very obvious that denial was the only answer possible from the bank. And when it comes to the adults in question who work at the bank, it's also a different story. Now, the adults in the bank, 
understood that if they admitted that several generations of their family had been presidents of state-owned banks, then this kind of thing would definitely spark a massive social reaction and all their involved relationships, uh, interest groups, talks of nepotism slash corruption, that would explode. And so they want to keep things down. But like I said, stress in effect. As this story becomes viral, a reporter actually conducted interviews with some of the people who are knowledgeable about the situation, particularly staff at the bank, and they gave this response, saying here, not all family members of the said family are presidents. Yeah, what a great non-answer, but also it tells us a, a, a lot of stuff. So the response is as follows, right? It says, relevant staff said that the child was indeed the child of a president of a certain branch, but it's not like the video says where everyone in the family is a bank president. His grandfather is an ordinary employee of the branch and has been retired for nearly 20 years, and his mother is an ordinary department cadre level staff. Uh, and we're currently working intensively to verify the situation. Now, this raises two questions. Was his grandfather a president before his retirement and became a regular employee after his retirement. And because the mother was a uh, deputy department level cadre, that is equivalent to a vice president in the bank because that's a party title instead of a government or a bank title. So obviously it raises more questions. And if you just think logically, what are the odds that his family members all work at the same bank at the exact location and then the grandfather being an ordinary employee i guess it would be first in the family and then the mother is also there and then must be uh, you know the father's probably working there the kid wants to work there their entire family must love this bank for them to all want to work there and so it's clear to all of us that this is an abnormality uh in terms of how many cases that we can really see but of course it's also a normal thing in china because well, it's gone public, so it's abnormal, but there's thousands, if not more, happening in China without being disclosed every single day. And so that's really the story of nepotism with communist characteristics. All right, if you enjoyed the content today, please leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.